fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, because I am Silver. Hey! <laughs> There was a grim look on the Lone Ranger's face as he and Tonto rode back to their secret camp in the Pecos Hills. They had spent days on the trail of Leif Tompkins, but all their efforts had failed to uncover any evidence of criminal activity. Tonto was very much concerned. Leif, feller, plenty smart. He make lots of friends, heap quick. Yes, Tonto. And when he finally does something crooked, he'll fix it so that one of these new friends gets the blame. We can't let that happen again. Ah. And what we do? We just have to keep watching him, trying to find out what his plans are. Once we know that, we can expose him before he gets away. Well, maybe me go to town, watch cafe. Him there most time. Good idea. Once we find out Look what he's up... Look there. Fire. Yes, in the valley below us. It's not big fire. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Knowing the havoc an unchecked fire could create in the heavily wooded slopes, the two riders raced toward the scene of the blaze. At the foot of the hill, a clear view of the scene made them pull up short. Oh, 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 fire out there, in clearing. Then we don't have to worry about it. That's the Circle R Ranch. We see many men, but them not touch fire. You're right, Tonto. They're all standing around watching it. Something must be wrong. Come on, come on, come on. Lone Ranger and Tonto moved closer to the edge of the wood. From here, they could see a ranch typical of the West, except for one thing. Instead of the customary ranch house, there were two, several hundred yards apart, each an exact duplicate of the other. A huge pile of hay was blazing fiercely in the clearing between them. On one side of the blaze, a line of bewildered cowboys stood beside filled water buckets, while from the other, Ron Bentley and Tom Smithers, the two owners of the ranch, kept shouting at them. Well, what are you darn fools waiting for? Can't you see that hay is burning up? Put it out! Well, that's what we started to do. But Mr. That's Bentley... right. I said leave it alone in a minute. I told this big four flusher to deliver what? that hay. And it's not my hay till it's put in my barn. Four oh. flusher, am I? Why, compared to a sway backed old goat like you, that's a compliment. Well, it won't be when I'm finished saying what I got in my mind. Well, listen, we gotta do something. Shut about... up, you! Shut up! Ron Bentley. 
Whatever's rattling around in that broken down skull of yours isn't fit to be called to mind. I'll bet you deliberately fired that hay because I wouldn't let Judd deliver it to you. Hey, All right, Judd, boys. Please, you. Just pour the water over the embers and make sure it don't spread. Huh? What's that? The yard gets so long, there's nothing left to see. What? Now that's a fine how to do. I'll get some more feed up here tomorrow, Mr. Bentley. And this time I'll put it in the barn where it belongs. You're yeah, not going to carry it one step further than this. Right, 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 From the edge of the wood, Tonto watched the scene with a puzzled frown. Me hear about fight between owners of Circle R. This is not good. That's just a sample of how far two old men will go to spite each other, Tonto. Tom Smithers and Ron Bentley have been at it for five years now. But why them fight? Nobody remembers what started it. But both men are too proud to give in. So they've been feuding ever since. Oh, then why them stay partners on ranch? Well, from what I hear, each wanted to make sure the other didn't get more than he did. Smithers kept the ranch house, so Bentley built one exactly like it. And they divided up everything else they could. Well, someday maybe there'd be much trouble. Much better if them be friends. Yes, you're right, Tonto. With those hair-triggered tempers, this thing could go beyond a joke. Well, perhaps we can do something about that later. Right now, our job is to take care of Leif Tompkins. Come on, sir. Get him up, Scout. While the Lone Ranger and Tonto were discussing the feud between the two ranch owners, Judd Vickers, their foreman, was wondering whether he shouldn't give up trying to find some way of getting his bosses together. Anything he did for one owner always meant trouble with the other. He was still brooding when he entered the Gold Nugget Cafe in town that evening and sat down at a corner table. He looked up sourly as Leif Tompkins approached. What do you want, Tompkins? Just to sit with you for a minute. Have a drink? Not interested. I know how you feel. Heard about that hay burning? What business is it of yours? None. Except that I know how hard it's been for you. For somebody who don't carry anybody's brand along, you learn a lot, don't you? Oh, I get around. For instance, I know that you'd have quit the circle hour long ago if you didn't think so much of them stubborn old friends. Wait, now, wait a minute. Sit down, Judd. Sit down. I'm not trying to bait you. That's just the plain honest truth, and you know it. Both of them are causing a heap of trouble just because they're too stiff-necked to back down a little. Yeah, that's true enough. Looks to me like there's only one man who can fix things up, and that's you. They both think a lot of you, Judd. I know it, but... You're doing a lot of talking and not getting any place, Tompkins. What are you getting at? Nothing. Except that if I was in your place, I'd do something to see that they stopped all this foolishness. What do you think I've been doing for the past five years? I tried just about everything. Maybe. Where I come from, we can't get a mule moving with a whip. We light a fire under the critter. And I... Hey, Judd. You know that redskin who's hanging around? Who? That redskin. No. No, I never saw him before. Wait till I get him out of here. Don't forget about him. Hmm? I keep on talking. I'm interested. Well, the way that I look at it... You two bosses won't get together unless they can make up without thinking about it. Like, uh, well, say if they had to fight side by side. Yeah. Fighting together. Now, now that'd be too dangerous. Well, maybe we can fix it so as it won't be. Look here. I got some pals who are always ready for a little excitement. Now, maybe if we pulled a fake raid at the Circle R, rustled a herd right from under their noses, old Smithers and Bentley would have to get together. Oh, that wouldn't work. My riders would fight. Yeah. Well, uh, couldn't you get your boys off somewhere? That shouldn't be hard to do. Yeah, I suppose I could. Hey, now, wait a minute. Supposing this does come off, just what do you get out of it? Just a little excitement, that's all. I want to make sure of that first. Folks around here don't know too much about you. I'm just trying to help you out, Judd. You make the arrangements and we'll do the rest. We can leave the cattle for you in the box canyon near Los Palos. Yeah, think it over. Sure, Judd. Anytime you say. Just let me know. Oh, thanks. Well, guess I'll be getting back to the ranch. As Judd got up to leave, the Indian who had been lounging around walked out too. Once outside, he hurried to his horse and rode off to meet the lone ranger who was waiting for him just beyond the town. Quickly, Tonto told him of the conversation he had overheard. 
So Tompkins is up to something at last. Ah, him have good scheme. Yes, I can see that. And as usual, he'll have someone to take the blame for everything. You say Judd hasn't agreed to it yet? No, him say want think it over. Good. Where did Judd go from the cafe? Him go back to ranch. Then that's our chance. Come on, Toto. We'll try to catch up with him before he reaches it. Ah. Judd Vickers started back to the Circle R in a much lighter mood. He wasn't too sure how far he could trust Leif Tompkins, but he could see now that Leif was right. His efforts to get his two bosses together had not been drastic enough. He weighed Leif's plan carefully as he rode along. Yeah, I guess there's no other way out, as Tompkins said. It'll take something as big as a rustling job to pull the bosses out of this. Yeah, I'll do it. Right up there, Judd. I want to talk to you. Now, who in thunder is that? Who there, who boy? Who's over, who boy? Who? Hey, what do you want? A mask man. Don't go for that gun, Judd. I said I wanted to talk to you. I don't have anything to say to an outlaw except... No, you don't. Oh, that draw. Hand it over. Here. I'll give you your gun back when we're through talking. What do you want? I'm listening. Leif Tompkins tried to talk you into one of his schemes tonight. How do you know that? Toto overheard you. Then you're the redskin Leif tried to throw out. Ah, me here planning it not good. Judd, Tompkins is a smooth talker, but he generally leads to trouble. I came here to warn you not to have anything to do with him. What's it to you? Only that I know you have a fine record as foreman of the Circle R. I wouldn't like to see you spoil it. You sound as if Tompkins is one of the law. No, he isn't. But he's never been more than a step ahead of the sheriff. It's been the men he has worked with who have been caught and sent to jail. If that's all you got to say, I'll be moseying along. Well, that isn't all. Many horses come, Kimo Sali. You got something more to say now, mister? It'll wait. Right into the brush until those men go by. Oh, no, we won't. Over here, quick! Get him, boys! Cover him! Oh, 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 oh. And you, Judd? That's right. You came just in time, Lee. One of the boys noticed that Indian followed you out when you left the cafe. It sounded kind of funny to me, so I rounded up the boys and found you. Guess it's lucky we did. Who's this mask hombre? I don't know. He didn't try to rob me. Just said he wanted to talk to me about you. Yeah? What do you have to say? I was warning Judd that if he let you talk him into this scheme, he'd regret it. Other people have found that out, too. What's he mean by that, Leif? Just a lot of wild talk, that's all. You can't trust an owl hoot. Don't worry, you won't have to listen to him anymore. Why not? Because I'm going to save the sheriff a job. I'm going to shoot him right now. Now, hold on, Leif. I don't like road agents. But I don't go for cold-blooded killing. Judd, you said yourself he was warning you against me. That means he's caught on to our scheme. We turn him over to the sheriff, he'll talk sure shooting. That's a sample of what I was talking about, Judd. Tompkins won't hesitate to murder to have his own way. Don't listen to him, Judd. He's just twisting things around. I'm just trying to save the sheriff a job, that's all. If that's the way you want it, we'll take him in. Start riding, you. I'll do that, but not where you think. This way, Tonto. Uh, hey, 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 a hidden signal from the Lone Ranger sent Silver crashing against Tompkins' horse, forcing the animal back against the others. Before the men could recover from the surprise movement, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had disappeared into the black mass of underbrush which bordered the trail. This good place, Kimosabe. We stop here. No, Tonto. We're going back to camp. We not take Tompkins. Him plenty bad. No. The most the sheriff could do would be to order him out of town. Then he could try his scheme somewhere else. I want him to have enough rope to hang himself. But I think he's doing it now. Come on, Come on, Come Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. The following evening, Tom Smithers, half-owner of the Circle R, stood at the window of his living room looking across the ranch yard at the home of his partner. Well, about time he put his light out. Now I can get to bed. Uh, uh, I can't figure out what makes him stay up so late. Pretty near ten o'clock. Maybe he's planning some way of putting something over on me. And if he is, he'll have to stay up later than that. <laughs> but, uh... Well, don't wear out that door. Come on in. Who, who's there? Come into the light so as I can see you. I'm a friend, Mr. Smithers. Don't have no friends. But you're masked. You don't have to draw. I said I'm a friend, and I mean it. I didn't come here to rob you. You won't get a chance to, you mean. Put your hands up. All right. I'll put them up if you'll listen to me. Yeah, spiel all you want to now, stranger. As long as you keep them hands still. Won't cost me nothing to listen to you now. I want your help, Smithers, in keeping your foreman from making a big mistake. What kind of a mistake? Uh, Judd let Leif Tompkins sell him on the idea of a fake hold-up on the ranch. Figuring that if it came to a fight, you and Bentley would forget your feud and fight together. Yeah, plum foolishness. What's he going to do? Tompkins is to rustle one of your herds. What? Rustle? Now I know you're lying. My boys would make mincemeat out of them rustlers. And they've covered that. Judd is to get the boys away from the ranch house that night. Uh, but you said it was to be a fake. That's what Judd thinks. He doesn't know Tompkins. Tompkins wouldn't leave the herd in the box canyon as he promised. He'd take it away and leave Judd here to face the music. When did you find out all this? Yesterday. But I still don't know when it'll happen. I can tell you that. It's tonight. Tonight? Judd told me after supper that he was taking the crew up into the hills... He heard that some of the stock was bogged down up there. Then we'll have to work fast. Shots! They're here. Kimasabi, you hear shooting? Yes. Could you tell where it's from, Toto? Shots come from another house. Well, let's get over there. If they hurt my partner, I'll get those coyotes if I have to chase them clear through Mexico. The three men dashed the short distance across the ranch yard to Bentley's house. There was a rapidly fading drumming of hoofs toward the south. But they ignored it as they ran into the darkened living room. Ben! Ben, where are you? Where's the lamp? It's on that table near the window. Light it, Tonto. We'll search the house. Uh Uh-huh. Me do it. Hurry up, Engine. Yeah. Can't see a thing in this place. There. Oh, he's not anywhere around here. I found him here in the kitchen. Bring the lamp. Uh Uh-huh. Ben, you all right? He's wounded. Got some water. Uh, Me get it. What happened, Ben? Uh, The ordinary coyotes wanted my cash. Heard him say they were going to wrestle our beef. Did you stop him? No, we came here first, soon as we heard the shooting. Why, you dumb galoot coming after me when them critters are getting away with our cattle? Hang the cattle. That flea-bitten, dried-up hide of yours is more important. Them cows are just as much mine as you are yours. Just because you got extravagant Take it easy. ways. Take it easy, Bentley. They can't get much of a start on us with a herd. We can make you comfortable first. Here. Here, water. You drink. Good. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Uh, not bad. You fix bad. Oh, there. don't worry about me. Get after them rustlers. Funny, none of the boys showed up. You take care of him, Toto. Uh, it's not hard. Uh, what are you going to do? You know where Judd and the boys went, don't you? Of course I do. I'm going after the rustlers. You got your men and follow. Rustlers maybe have big gang, Kimasabi. Keep dangerous, go alone. Yes, the engine's right. Better wait for us. No. If we let them get too close to the border, we might lose them. I'll cut sign for you. Make it as fast as you can, Smithers. Uh, what is this? That man is masked. The boys are gone. What's going on around here? Got no time to answer questions now, Bent. If that masked army is willing to stick his neck out for us, the least I can do is back up his plane. Leif Tompkins had chosen his trail well. He drove the cattle over large stretches of bare rock, a surface so hard and smooth that even a herd as large as his left almost no sign by which they might be traced. A less trail-wise tracker than the Lone Ranger might have been lost almost at the outset, but the masked rider of the plains pushed on slowly, painstakingly. The precious hours passed, and still no sign of the outlaws or the herd then from the distance came the sound he had been listening for. We've caught up with them. Come on, Silver! The 
dim light of the waning moon gave the Lone Ranger a vague picture of the surrounding territory, enough to make him send Silver racing off to the side of the men and cattle and toward a rock outcropping ahead of them. Hold oh, 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 Silver, easy. Back in here, Silver. There's enough protection for both of us. That's it, big fella. I can't fight off all of them. Maybe I can slow them down. Steady, big fella. Steady, boy. Several shots at the lead steers might spook them enough to do the trick. Hey, out the stamp beating after them. Grab them up, boys. Get them in. Let's break the loose fire. Them shots sounded like a kid from there. Over to the east. Thanks, you come with me. Let's get the herd quieted down. Hi. Come on, this is it, Silver. It's up to us to keep them here as long as possible. Don't move, big fella. Leaving Silver behind the rocks, the Lone Ranger crept to another vantage point from which he could watch the two approaching riders. So look sharp. There must be some mistake, Leaf. There can't be anyone within miles of here. Oh, they can't, huh? Maybe those shots were just something we imagined. Could they have come from someone in our own outfit? No. Maybe it was a hunter or a trapper or something of the sort. This time of the night, not a chance. Even if it was, we gotta find the critter. Gotta shut his mouth so as he can't tell the sheriff what he saw. Just keep looking around. Look sharp at every rock. Hey, Leaf. Huh? Look at that rock over yonder. Right where I'm porting. I see it. What about it? There's something behind it. Are you sure? Dead sure. Oh, 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 boy. Hit the ground right here. We go ahead on to it. Right. <laughs> Leave the horses here. Yeah. Steady, boy. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You saw something moving back of that rock. Come on. Keep your gun handy. Yeah. The Lone Ranger saw the two men approach the rock behind which Silver had been left. He knew that his horse would presently be discovered. To divert the attention of the outlaws, he opened fire. Over there. Those shots came from the side. Now here, Leaf. This rock. Get behind it. Right. Yeah, those shots came close. I heard them. I'll show that critter. There. That rat it. That'll give him something to think about. Hey, get, get him. Fire from that side of this rock. I'll fire from this. Now, Sebby. Now, wait. Hey, you! Can't get away from us. Come out of there with your hands high and we'll give you a chance to surrender. You hear me? I hear you. Come out and we'll come after you. Show yourself and see what happens. I don't like that, Leif. You got to stick his head out from behind that rock to take aim. Maybe I can get him. It's worth a try. Let's go. All right, if you say so. Get down! Whew. Gosh, those were close. That was just to warn you. Next time, I'll aim to hit you. Oh, gone it, Leif. He can do it. That crit is a dead shot. Yeah, he sure is. Let's back away, keeping this rock between him and us. You mean leaving there? Yeah. Well, we can't do that. Every time we got the cattle quieted down, he'd shoot again, get them all spooked up. We got to stay here and shoot it out. For how long? Won't have to be for long. Another half hour, and it'll be getting daylight. Then we can pick them off without trouble. If he don't pick us off, just keep shooting whenever you see him show himself. Ranger fired cautiously, conserving his dwindling supply of cartridges as much as possible. Each shot had a telling effect. The echoing reports goaded the fear-crazed cattle into one mad rush after another. The sweating, cursing outlaws did their best to head off the stampedes, but with each rush, the herd became smaller. The Lone Ranger was down to the last of his cartridges. Six cartridges left. They'll not last long. Hey, you! Can you hear me? I'm still here. Getting daylight. Long to live. No. See that light over the east? As soon as it spreads, we'll be able to draw a clear feed on you when you show yourself. You'd better think about the cattle. Look at them. They're running harder than ever. Hey, hey, look. You're not the only ones who have been stalling for time. Look over there. It's the sheriff. Get out of here. Oh, Scott, oh, Oh, fella. Give me a shot, I'm all right, Tuttle. Watch those outlaws. We want them. Oh, shoot. I give up. You too, Tompkins. I should have killed them. Oh, oh, now, oh. Were well, you all right, mister? Now I am. That fool Judd went up into the hills just like he said. That held us up some. Lucky your Indian friend waited for us. He followed your trail plenty fast. Oh, 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 oh. And we got him all rounded up, Mr. Smithers. Get him up. 
I sent most of the boys out here for the cattle. Good. Old Ben would have a fit if we'd have lost any of them. Tompkins, I've been looking for Get you. Get away from me. Where's that cash you took from Mr. Bentley? I hand it over fast. In my saddlebags. I haven't touched any of it. Go get it, Judd. Then you can take these mavericks into town while I get back to the ranch. Ben will be waiting to hear how we came out. Then you two aren't feuding anymore? Feuding? Where'd you get that idea? Just because we had a little disagreement? <laughs> Why, it wasn't nothing. I, I'm glad to hear that. Mister... I want to apologize. Oh. If I'd have followed your advice, I wouldn't have got us mixed up in a mess like this. Forget it, Judd. You've ended the feud and we've caught Tompkins red-handed. That's what counts. I'm here. Get silver if you tell me. Good, Tonto. You won't need us anymore. It'll be kind of easy enough. Oh, I bet me you'll be throwing a big shindig tonight. Kind of a get-together party. We'd sure appreciate it if you could be there, you and your Indian friend. Oh, thanks, Mr. Smithers, but we're moving on. Adios. Come on, uh, Adios. Uh, they're real men, them two. Yeah, they sure are. Imagine, risking his life to patch up a quarrel. Yeah, that's something Bent and me will never forget. Whenever either one of us gets cantankerous again, there's one thing that'll put sense into our heads. And that's just thinking about the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 